All right, hey guys, and welcome back to today's video. So today we're gonna be going ahead and making a mini pond just like the one I made out of that 40 gallon stock tub, but out of a flower pot this time. Now I'm sure basically everyone has a leftover, an old unused flower pot that they aren't using that they can turn into a pond. Meaning a flower pot pond is a lot more cost effective than a stock tub pond because a lot of people already have the flower pot, so that's basically free. So I went looking around the side of our house and I found this unused flower pot. It's a little bit old and weird looking, but it has this nice stand on the bottom, which I kind of like. So I went ahead and got it all cleaned up and then I found this problem. There's a hole in the bottom. To remedy this, what we're gonna do is take a piece of pond liner right here and we're gonna super glue it or hot glue it to the bottom to cover up this hole so obviously it's leak proof. In addition to the flower pot itself, I have a filter because obviously we're gonna need to go ahead and keep the fish alive and healthy. And then I also got some gravel. I'm also gonna put a few live plants in here but we'll see that once it's all set up. So I'm gonna place the pond right here because it's close to a power outlet and it's right when you walk out the back door. Okay, so I got the pot in place. Now, first thing we have to do is go ahead and use a hot glue gun, and I'm going to seal this hole up on the bottom. So I'm going to take this hot glue gun and do a nice big loop of hot glue all the way around the hole. Now, what this is going to do is obviously, you know, water seal it so no water escapes. We wouldn't want it to leak or anything. Then I'm going to take our little patch, stick it on the bottom, make sure we get it all the way around. Make sure we get a nice seal in there so no water can escape. Now we just go ahead and let it dry and then we can start putting some substrate down and filling it up with water. So while the little seal at the bottom of the pond is drying, we can go ahead and get the filtration set up. This is just a small little internal filter with the cartridge right here. Go ahead and rip this open and we have the filter bag. Now the filter bag just goes in the filter just like this and this filter will hang in the little pond and keep the water nice and clean for the fish. While we're on the topic of ponds and while the mini pond or the flower pot pond is drying, I thought this would be a great time to talk about new algae. So as you may or may not know, I have to keep an umbrella over my pond because it gets so covered in algae. I have these massive hair algae outbreaks. As you can see, it's all the way up to the top of the water. It swarms my water lilies. It covers the entire exterior of the pond and pretty much coats everything inside it. Now, new algae is supposed to be basically an all-in-one solution that you dose once a week and it's supposed to basically make your pond crystal clear and perfect. What you do is you turn off your UV sterilizer, which is in my pressure filter back here, and you dose it once a week in the morning. What it does is it promotes diatoms, which is a type of algae that's then eaten by zooplankton. And then the fish can go ahead and feed off the zooplankton, essentially starving algae or hair algae like we have of food. So in the next four to six weeks, I'm gonna put new algae to the test. They went ahead and sent me this little bottle to try out. And we're gonna go ahead and see how good it does on this pond. So here's what it looks like right now. As you can see, the water is crystal clear, but we have hair algae covering everything. I'm gonna start dosing this tomorrow. And then from then on, I'm gonna dose it every single week and we're gonna see how things start looking. But I'm gonna go ahead and give you updates throughout each video just to see how good the pond is doing. I'm gonna go ahead and feed the fish while we're here. If you watched my last video, you saw I fed these guys watermelon and they loved it. So I've been feeding them watermelon for a few days, but I thought today I would just go ahead and give them their normal no, pellets, no, get them no, some normal no, food. No, they honestly no, no. don't care though. They love watermelon, they love pellets, they love pretty much everything. The ducks still like to stay as far away from me as possible, but as you can see, Peanut, has turned out to be a female and butter has turned out to be a male as you can see they're really taking their adult colors but the ducks are doing just fine quacking a lot eating a lot and pooping a lot actually while we're out here with the ducks i'm gonna go ahead and try to grab them and bring them out no you can't get out there no there we go so now that i brought them in the grass i'm gonna go ahead and do their absolute favorite thing which is turn on these sprinklers and they absolutely love being in the sprinklers. They'll play in here for hours while butter is right now. Peanut is just rude and doesn't want to do anything. But butter absolutely loves the sprinklers. There, now both of them are in. But these guys absolutely love the water. So they'll go ahead and chill out here for a little bit. But in the meantime, now onto the reef tank. We've had some bad stuff happen in here recently. The coral is all doing fine. The starfish is doing great as well. The anemone is massive and doing great also, but the issue is the fish. So I normally feed this tank a mix of seaweed, pellets, and mysis, and brine shrimp. Now we went on vacation for two weeks, both a week at a time, both separate, like a few weeks apart. But I went ahead and put an automatic fish feeder on here that dumped pellets into the tank twice a day. And now all the fish I have in here are extremely aggressive eaters. The clownfish, the damsels, the, the royal grandma, and the tang and the fox face are very aggressive eaters they eat food as soon as it touches the water now the firefish and my bar goby are a little bit more reclusive so what ended up happening is they basically starve themselves to death 
The bar goby went missing and then I found its dead body a few days later. So there was nothing I could do about that one, but I tried to save the firefish. It was very lethargic and not swimming around at all. So I went ahead and put a little breeding container right here. Went ahead and put some rocks in there so we had places to hide. And I went ahead and took a pipette and fed him mice strip directly and he ate a little bit. But unfortunately about 12 hours later he went ahead and died also. So we lost the firefish and the bar goby. Which is extremely unfortunate but it is what it is. There's nothing I could do about it. I tried my best to spot feed them as close as I could as soon as I got home. I fed this tank a ton of mice and a ton of brine shrimp. Which the other fish loved. But unfortunately, the firefish and the bar goby didn't do too well. Same thing with the fancy goldfish. Not much has gone on here. We can go ahead and feed these guys, get them some pellets. But they're just being goldfish. Not much here. So now that our seal is good to go, I'm going to add some black gravel to just give beneficial bacteria a place to live and also just kind of cover up our patch on the bottom. Now all we have to do is get the water in. And while the pond is filling up, we can get the filtration installed, which is just going to sit in here just like that. This pond isn't that big, so we're not gonna be getting goldfish for this pond. I have another fish in mind for it, but the filter should be just fine. Now we have a few more things we have to do to make this fish safe. First off, we have to condition the water. Drop it. And then in about 20 minutes off camera, I'm gonna go ahead and dose bacteria supplement in here because you can't just set up a tank and add a fish right away. You have to go ahead and put some sort of good bacteria in there so it can break down the fish poop when you add the fish. Yes, science! Now I got some floating plants to make the fish feel at home. Got some water lettuce, and I forgot what that plant is. Water hyacinth, I think. Got those two plants. Now we can go ahead and let everything sit, and then we'll get fish for it tomorrow. The next day. All right, guys, so it is the next day, and our pond is doing quite well so far, or at least it did overnight. So um, first of all, it's hot. I don't know if you can see that, but it is 100 degrees outside, and I have the air conditioner off so it doesn't mess up my audio. So I'm going to go ahead and head to PetSmart, and if they don't have what I want, we're going to go ahead and go to Petco. So I made it to PetSmart. Let's go ahead and see if they have the fish I need. Ladies and gentlemen, we got them. All right, so PetSmart came in clutch for the most part. We got three feeder minnows right here. They only had three, so we only got three. Now three is a good amount to start off on because you don't want to add too many fish at once to a new aquarium. Because we added the beneficial bacteria though, and those plants that already had some good bacteria on it, we should be good to go towse these three fish. And then down the road, we can go ahead and buy more. A few moments later. All right, so I'm back, got my fish, got my taco bow, we're ready to go. So I'm just gonna go ahead and start off by acclimating these guys. So just go ahead and set them in here for about 10 minutes and then we'll go ahead and let them free in their new flower pot fish tank. A few moments later. Okay, so our flower pot fish are ready to go in here. I estimate this flower pot is probably around anywhere from five to 10 gallons. It does hold quite a bit of water. So I think you could probably get maybe around seven minnows in here total. Three is a good start though. And then as the system, you know, matures a little bit more, we can maybe get a few more, depending on how long I keep this set up. The plants, I think they're gonna do good here as well. But I'm gonna go ahead and open up this bag of fish, get this rubber band off. Now I don't really wanna put the PetSmart water in here just because it probably is pretty dirty. Their feeder tank system probably doesn't have the cleanest water. And I don't have a net right now, so I'm just gonna go ahead and grab these guys out one by one. So first one, I got this one, the colorful one. Oh, he jumped right into the pond. That's like the more rosy red minnow. Then this one's more of like a feeder guppy kind. And then these last two right here are more of the feeder guppy kind of basic brown feeder minnow. So that is it right here for this pond. Very easy setup. And you can do this for very, very cheap. For example, you probably have the flower pot already. The plants will run you probably about, we'll say seven bucks. They're optional though. The gravel we put down here probably is around five bucks, but once again, the gravel's optional. A little simple internal filter like this will only probably cost you around $10 on Amazon or Walmart, somewhere cheap, as all it's really doing is running water through a filter pad. So a small filter like this rated for around 10 gallons would work absolutely perfect and will be very cheap. Then obviously all you would need is the water, some tap water conditioner, and then some source of beneficial bacteria to jumpstart the cycle on the flower pot aquarium and then obviously your fish. I chose to do the feeder minnows just because they were cheap and I wanted to keep this very low budget, but obviously you could do stuff like mollies, guppies, platies, really any small fish you want. This is a mini pond, so you could put just about any small tropical fish in here. My water right now is about 80 degrees because it is outside and it's like I said earlier, like 100 degrees outside. Luckily it's in the shade though, so it's gonna stay a nice 80 degrees, which is perfect for most tropical fish. So for probably less than 20 or 25 bucks, you could have your very own flower pot pond. That is it for this video. Thank you guys so much for watching. Good, bye.